वेलकम एवरीबॉडी नमस्ते एम आई ऑडिबल जी गणेश जी ऑडिबल या सो इट इज नाइस टू बी विथ यू फॉर दिस सेशन द बेसिक आइडिया ऑफ हैविंग दिस सेशन वंस इन अ मंथ विथ ऑल ऑफ यू इज टू रीएम्फेसाइज the need for the self development in order to work for the societal development so ultimately we want to have a human society and we are working for it but this human human society can be achieved through our collective effort and what we are calling as team but ultimately the team can work effectively and purposefully only if there is development in this self so depending upon how we have developed ourselves we will be able to contribute to work as a team for societal development so this session in particular will focus on the issue of self development for the purpose of team development as well as societal development so we have ultimately the goal of a human society but to do that to reach to that goal we have to work for the development of this self this self development so we'll focus on this self development <clears throat> when we uh, try to look at this self development we can see it from two perspective one is from the perspective of an individual the perspective of a human being so starting from human being when we look at our desire the basic desire and how it can be fulfilled we can slowly relate to the higher and higher orders of our being so starting from individual we relate to the family society nature and existence so this is one approach to go about the other approach is to start with the perspective of the entire nature and existence so that we will talk later but to begin with we will talk about looking at things from the perspective of the individual from the perspective of a human being so when we look at it from the perspective of a human being <clears throat> the basic issue is what is our basic desire what is our goal as a human being as an individual so what we want is to live so three things we want to live number one number two we want to live with fulfillment number three we want to live with continuous fulfillment so not only fulfillment sometime or the other but fulfillment in continuity so one is that we want to live then we want to live with fulfillment then we want to live with continuous fulfillment so ultimately we want to live with continuous fulfillment so if you look at these three basic desires and if you try to find out what is the way out to fulfill this desire so in order to live we need physical facility so when we say we want to live we relate it to the body so we want to keep our body alive and for that we need physical facility we need food we need clothes we need housing for nurturing the body for protection of the body and so on so in order to live we need physical facility it is essential but when it comes to living with fulfillment 
physical facility alone is not enough <laughs> to live we need physical facility but to live with fulfillment we need relationship the feelings in the relationship over and above physical facility so if you look at <clears throat> yourself and take this example that if you have a good room with air condition and this air conditioner is working at 21 degree centigrade but so as long as physical facility is concerned everything is in order but if you are sitting with a person and with that person you have a feeling of opposition then what will happen will you have the feeling of fulfillment feeling of happiness or unhappiness that you can see right and any amount of further physical facility a better room a bigger room lower temperature 21 degree to 13 degree will that make you happy so you can see that in order to ensure living with fulfillment we need relationship the feeling in relationship over and above physical facility so we need both we need feeling in relationship and we need physical facility but when you come to living with continuous fulfillment these two are not enough this physical facility and relationship is not enough because when you try to live in relationship you find that whenever you are interacting with someone you begin with good feeling right feeling but if the other person does not respond properly or he behaves in a negative manner he disrespects you then you lose your that <coughs> confidence and you are likely to react so that feeling of so you cannot ensure the continuity of that feeling of relationship and therefore you are not able to ensure the continuity of happiness so how do we go about it when you want continuity of fulfillment continuity of happiness then i have to ensure that i have that feeling of relationship in me in continuity and it is not dependent on the response or reaction of the other behavior of the other now in order to make sure that my feeling of relationship is in continuity i have to have the understanding of relationship i have to understand that the relationship is there in existence it is there by its very nature and it is relationship which is naturally acceptable to me and out of that understanding of relationship i have the feeling of relationship for the other person in an unconditional manner and then only i can ensure this feeling in continuity and therefore happiness in continuity <laughs> so now to ensure continuity in feeling in fulfillment continuity in happiness i need right understanding of the relationship so now you can see that three things are required the right understanding is required the feeling in relationship is required and physical facility is required so live with, to live with continuous fulfillment i need all these three things right understanding 
relationship and physical facility. So this is something which we have been exploring for quite some time, right from the introductory workshop. We have been exploring this. So we have to keep checking whether this is very clear to us. Right? Whether we have understood this, that to live with continuous fulfillment, continuous happiness and prosperity, we need to have all these three things, right? Understanding, relationship and physical facility. And if you look at the right priority of it, the most important of these three is right understanding. Number one, relationship. Number two, and physical facility. Number three. Though all three of them are required, but this is the priority. Now you can keep asking this question to yourself. Every moment, whether you are working for all three of them and not only for physical facility or physical facility and relationship, but for all three, the right understanding, relationship and physical facility. And you are working for them with right priority. The right understanding as the first priority, the relationship as the second priority, and physical facility as the third priority. So what is your status? What is my status? This is what we have to keep evaluating every moment. So whenever I am having a thought, a desire, an imagination, what is it about? Is it about the physical facility alone? Or is it about physical facility and relationship? Or is it about physical facility, relationship and right understanding in the right priority of right understanding, relationship and physical facility? So I think this is one basic point of evaluation for each one of us. That for every thought, every desire, every expectation, every imagination, and then slowly every sanskar, I must be able to ask this question, whether I'm working for all three or any one of them. And if I'm working for all three, Am I working it with the right priority or otherwise? Okay. So now with this uh, background, uh, this background that we need all three things, right understanding, relationship, and physical facility in this order to ensure living with continuous fulfillment. We can see that right understanding ultimately calls for understanding the harmony at all levels of our being, which means harmony in human being, family, society, nature, and existence. Because if you look at our being, it is related to all these levels of my existence. And therefore, I need to ensure the understanding of harmony at each of these levels. Right. And with this right understanding, we can ensure right living. And this right living will be in two ways. One is right relationship with the human being and second is with the rest of nature. So what we are calling with, of calling as relationship with human being is essentially one part of my right living. And what we are calling as physical facility with rest of nature, it has to do with my understanding and living with relationship with the rest of nature. 
And if I do this, ensure this right understanding and right feeling, right living, then this can ensure living with happiness in continuity for myself and working for happiness of the other. Similarly, it can lead to work, live with prosperity for ourselves and work for the prosperity of others. So this can be the source of mutual happiness as well as mutual prosperity, which is our basic human desire. So only through right understanding of harmony at all levels of our being, starting from individual to the whole nature and existence, and living with that harmony can ensure continuity of happiness for me. So this is one way of looking at it right? from the perspective of a human being, perspective of an individual. Yes. <laughs> now we can see from the perspective of the nature, the whole existence. So if you look at the perspective, look at it from the perspective of the whole nature, the existence. In our introductory workshop as well as higher level workshops, we have seen that existence ultimately is in the form of coexistence, which is in the form of units submerged in space. And if you look at the units. The units can be identified as material units as well as the unit of consciousness. And this we have seen when we were working with understanding the harmony in the human being. We saw that the human being is coexistent for self and the body. The body is material in nature. The self is consciousness in nature. Similarly, the whole all the units in nature can be seen as material unit or as consciousness units. If you look at the material units, the material units can be divided into physical order and bio order. And if you look at the physical order, it starts with the smallest atom to molecule to molecular structure to lump of material and to planets. And if you look at the bio order, it starts with the smallest tiny cell to plants and trees, and then an animal body and the human body. All these are the part of the material units. We can also see that when a consciousness, the self, is associated with an animal body, we have animal order. And when the self is associated with the human body, we have human order. So this is how the whole existence is expressed in terms of these four orders in nature. Now, if you look at all this, all this is happening by way of coexistence. So we have the existence as coexistence. We have the space and the units in space. Then we have the material units and the consciousness units, and we have all these four orders with so much of variety. So all this is happening by way of coexistence, and we have not done anything for this, right? We have not done anything for all this to happen, to be there. We have not done anything for my body to be there, for myself to be there, for the coexistence of the body and self to be there. All it is there by way of coexistence in a natural manner. What do you think? Have you any done anything for you to be there, your body to be there? Have you done anything for yourself to be there? Have you done anything for the coexistence of yourself and body to be there? Or is it all there by way of very design of the coexistence? 
what do you think so the point i was trying to make is that all this you see in yellow color is already happening in the nature in the existence by way of coexistence given this if you see what human being has to do is what is written in this purple color right so two things we have to do right understanding and right feeling in the self right so one is ensuring right understanding second is ensuring right feeling and right thought the right conduct in the self so we are already there as human being that much has happened by way of coexistence so now what i have to do is to ensure this right understanding in me right feeling and right thought in me that right feeling and right thought will lead to right conduct so what is there in this violet violet part is something that we have to do as human being right so even from the perspective of the whole existence the nature ultimately our role in this existence in this nature is to ensure right understanding right feeling and right thought right and therefore right action whenever we express through the body so this would essentially mean that we have the understanding of coexistence harmony and relationship which is already there in existence in coexistence then next slide rajalji yeah so the existence is by way of coexistence harmony and relationship i have a natural acceptance for coexistence harmony and relationship therefore all that i have to do is to understand this coexistence harmony and relationship have the feeling and thought of coexistence harmony and relationship and live by coexistence harmony and relationship so understanding this coexistence harmony and relationship is what is called as truth satya the feeling and thought the feeling of coexistence harmony and relationship is what is called as love prem and the thought of living with coexistence harmony and relationship is what is called compassion so this understanding part the feeling part and the thought part is what i have to ensure within myself of coexistence harmony and relationship is what is essential and if i do that with right understanding that is understanding of harmony relationship and coexistence i am in a state of harmony and happiness with this feeling and thought of coexistence harmony and relationship i am in harmony within and in a state of happiness within so with that i can be in a state of continuous happiness and with this understanding feeling and thought of coexistence harmony and relationship whenever i express outside in my behavior work and participation in the higher order i will always work in accordance with relationship harmony and coexistence and therefore my behavior will be really fulfilling with the other human being my work will be mutually enriching with the rest of nature and my participation in the larger order will lead to fulfillment of human goal and that is how i can expand this to the undivided society and universal human order so whether i start from the perspective of a human being and work on how to ensure continuity of happiness or i start from the perspective of the existence nature as a whole and try to find out my role in this existence in this nature 
I reached to the same conclusion. The conclusion is that I have to understand this heart nature, this existence, and everything up to this nature and existence, the harmony in it. Then I have to have the right feeling and right thought, that is the feeling of relationship, harmony, and coexistence. And then I have to live with that feeling of relationship, harmony, and coexistence. If I do that, then I will be in a state of harmony and happiness within myself in continuity. And whenever I express myself with the world outside, my behavior, my work, my participation will be mutually fulfilling. So, if you look at our role as human being, ultimately, it looks as the following. Can we go to the next slide, Rajuji? Next. Yeah. So, this block B1 has to do with the right understanding, that is understanding of coexistence, harmony and relationship. The block B2 that imagination has to do with the feeling and thought of coexistence, harmony, and relationship. And that is the major part which is in the self, B1 and B2, that we have to ensure. This is 100% of my being. And a part of it, when I express outside, it is less than 1%. I express it in terms of my behavior, work, and participation in the larger order, which leads to mutual happiness, mutual prosperity, and fulfillment of human goal. And if I expand it to higher and higher scope, it leads to undivided society and universal human order. So my being starts with realization of coexistence, and it completes with expression outside as living in universal human order. So if I can see this role of mine and place it back in the whole existence, this is how it looks. Can we go back one slide, Rajuji? Yeah. So up to the human order is already happened in nature, in existence, by way of coexistence. I, as human being, has to do this part. Understanding of this coexistence, harmony, and relationship. The feeling and thought of this coexistence, harmony, and relationship. And ultimately expressing it outside in terms of my behavior, work, and participation in the larger world. So this turns out to be my role in this existence, in this nature, which is same as what I have to do for ensuring a state of continuous fulfillment in myself if I'm looking at it from the individual point of view. Yes. So from my side, there are two questions for you to reflect upon. Number one, which I said, how much time you are spending within yourself, thinking about it, feeling about it, understanding about it, how much time you are spending on right understanding, how much time on ensuring right feeling and right thought, and how much time you are spending to ensure right kind of physical facility. So are you taking care of all three of them, number one? Number two, if you are taking care of all three of them, what is your priority? And what is the percentage of your time and effort that you are investing in? That you have to start asking to yourself. This is one thing. Second thing is, it is the same thing that I'm asking in another way. 
to you have the understanding of the relationship harmony and coexistence which is there in the existence do you have this feeling and thought of relationship harmony and coexistence or it is otherwise whenever you are interacting with the world outside is your behavior work and participation is in line with relationship harmony and coexistence or otherwise a part of this would be what we are doing in exercise 1 in exercise 1 we are asking ourselves to look at our imagination at our feeling and thought so first we are saying that be aware of your imagination aware of your feeling and evaluate your feeling whether it is naturally acceptable or unnaturally acceptable or not naturally acceptable and when you evaluate your feeling also find out whether you are in a state of harmony and happiness or is harmony and unhappiness if you work in on this without any reaction then you will be in a state of pure observer from there you will be observing your feelings your thoughts you will be evaluating them and if you do that without reaction then these feelings these thoughts will get purified the feeling which are unnatural and leading to unhappiness will die out feeling which leads to harmony and happiness will have the continuity so this is one thing which you can check regarding the feeling and ultimately we are saying that when you are working with your feeling and evaluating them and they are getting purified and you are getting harmonious and happy when your subtlety increase you can even see your sanskar evaluate those sanskars and further ultimately you can work on understanding the relationship harmony and coexistence in its completeness that is what we are doing in 6b exercise 16b we are trying to understand the relationship harmony and coexistence from the place of your observer so this understanding is important if we have the right understanding of relationship harmony and coexistence then my sanskar will line up accordingly in a very natural manner and therefore my feelings will also be line up in accordance with relationship harmony and coexistence and with that i will be in a state of harmony and happiness in continuity so this is what essentially we are trying to do in exercise 1 working with the self working with the self from the place of pure observer so we are being aware we are observing lower lower activities of the self we are trying to evaluate them and just by observing these lower activities and evaluating them they start getting purified without any reaction without any enforcement without any struggle just by observation from the state of pure observer observation of the feelings observation of the sanskar and evaluating them whether they are natural natural whether they are leading to happiness or unhappiness this much will lead to the purification of the feeling purification of the sanskar and therefore 
lead to the state of harmony and happiness with you. And when we are doing this with the self, then that 1% time when I'm interacting with the world outside, I can also work on exercise too. And this exercise too is effective only when I am interacting with the body or other things in the world outside, which is less than 1% of my existence at the level of self. So in that sense, I keep telling that if you want to work on your self-development, on yourself, then it is very useful to join this exercise one and two. It is part of this PHV3 course, but we have been offering this morning session for last almost four years now. From 5.30 to 6.30 in English and 6.30 to 7.30 in Hindi. So every four months, we start with the new batch on exercise one and exercise two with the necessary theoretical background as well. So if you have already if you are already attending it or you have attended it and now you are being aware every moment and keep evaluating yourself and purifying yourself, either you are already doing it or you can plan to join your morning session, which is going to be very useful for this purpose. <laughs>